Calculating the pH of a weak base solution is a lot like calculating the pH of a weak acid solution. A Bronsted base was defined as a species that could accept a proton. If you have a solution of a weak base in water, the base will accept a proton from the water, forming BH plus as the base's conjugate acid. And when water loses a proton, the hydroxide ion will be the conjugate base of water. So these two would be an acid-base conjugate pair, and these two would be an acid-base conjugate pair. When we write our equilibrium expression, we're going to have the concentration of BH plus on the top times the concentration of hydroxide ion all over the equilibrium concentration of our weak base. Reminder that we don't include water in the equilibrium expression because it's a pure liquid. What we set our equilibrium expression equal to now is called K sub B. K sub B is called the base ionization constant. So when you look at your chart of acids and bases, you're gonna now be using values on the right-hand side of the chart under the bases. The following are some examples of weak bases that are derivatives of ammonia. Ammonia, or NH3, was a common weak base that we saw because there was a lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen that could donate those electrons and grab a proton from an acid. Methylamine, which is NH2CH3, is a lot like ammonia, only it has the CH3, or in other words, a methyl group, in place of one of the hydrogens. The nitrogen, though, still has a lone pair of electrons, and it's that lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen that will attack a proton of an acid. Another example is something like hydroxylamine. Hydroxylamine now has one of the hydrogens replaced on the ammonia with a hydroxyl group. The nitrogen, though, has that lone pair of electrons that it can donate to grab a proton. So many weak bases are derivatives of ammonia. Calculate the pH of a 0.4 molar ammonia solution. So first we're gonna to wanna to write our equation for our ionization of ammonia in water. And since it's a weak base, we know that the ionization is not going to occur 100%, so we're gonna have an equilibrium that's established. And ammonia is a base, and water will be our acid. So when ammonia picks up a proton from water, it forms NH4+, the ammonium ion, and we're left with OH-, minus the hydroxide ion. So we're gonna write our ice table. Our initial concentration of our weak base we were given was 0.4 molar. We're going to ignore the water because that's a pure liquid, so that concentration is effectively constant throughout. Our initial concentration of ammonia and hydroxide were zero before any ionization took place. When the ammonia reacts, it's going to go down by minus x, and when we form our ammonium and our hydroxide, those are both gonna go up by plus x. And so our equilibrium line for NH3 will be 0 0.40 minus X. For ammonia, it'll just be X. And hydroxide, it'll also just be X. So next we can write our equilibrium expression. We're going to be using the base ionization constant, Kb, equal to the hydroxide ion concentration times the ammonium ion concentration. Those are our products. Over our reactants which will just be the ammonia because we will not include the water. So now we need to look up on our chart what the base ionization constant or the K sub B is for NH3. So for ammonia, looking up that value, you should find 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth for the K sub B. Make sure you're looking on the base side and not the acid side, because you'll notice that ammonia could function as an acid or a base, being that it's amphoteric. But we want the base ionization constant because ammonia is functioning as the base in this example and water is functioning as the acid. Now that we have our value, also notice that it is small. So we have a value that is 10 to the negative fourth or smaller. And that means that we get to use our simplifying assumption in this case. 
and we can ignore our minus x. So our 0 0.40 minus x will just become 0 0.40 when we plug it into our equilibrium expression. Next, substituting everything into our equilibrium expression, our Kb for ammonia was 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth. That'll be equal to x for our hydroxide ion concentration, x for our ammonium ion concentration, and then we just have 0 0.40 for our concentration of the ammonia. So that becomes x squared over 0 0.40. We can multiply both sides of the equation by 0 0.40, that gives us x squared being equal to 7.2 times 10 to the negative sixth. And then lastly, we will take the square root of both sides. And that gives us x being equal to 2.68 times 10 to the negative third. And from our equation in our ice table, x was equal to our hydroxide ion concentration in this case because we had a weak base. So from our hydroxide ion concentration, we can solve for the pOH of the solution because the pOH will be equal to the negative log of the hydroxide ion concentration. So we'll take negative log of 2.68 times 10 to the minus third, and that gives us a pOH of 2.57. Our relationship between pOH and pH was that the pH plus the pOH equaled 14, which was the pKW of water. So we can rearrange this equation now to solve for the pH of our solution. The pH will be equal to 14 minus our pOH, so minus 2.57 and that gives us a pH of 11.43. And as we expected, our pH should be greater than 7 because the solution should be basic. So that should be the double check at the very end. Make sure that you get a pH that is at least in the basic range because we had a weak base solution. Let's look at another example with a weak base. Find the concentration of hydroxide ion, the pOH, and the pH of a 0.25 molar solution of trimethylamine, a weak base. We have the equation for the ionization of trimethylamine. So trimethylamine reacts with water. The trimethylamine is the base, water is the acid. So water gives up a proton to form our protonated trimethylamine, which will be the conjugate acid of it. And then water's conjugate base is the hydroxide ion. We have the Kb for our trimethylamine, 6.3 times 10 to the negative fifth. So we can start with our equilibrium equation and generate our ice table. Initially, the concentration of our base was made up to be 0.25 molar. We're going to ignore the water because that's a liquid. Initially, we have zero amount of our protonated trimethylamine and our hydroxide ion. When our weak base reacts, it's going to go down by minus x, which is the stoichiometry from the equation. And when our products form, they're going to go up by plus x. So our equilibrium line will be 0.25 minus x, x, and x. We can write our equilibrium expression next. We're going to have k sub b is equal to the concentration of our protonated trimethylamine times the concentration of our hydroxide ion all over the concentration of our weak base. And we have a value for our Kb that is small again. So 10 to the minus fourth or smaller is kind of the general rule of thumb. So we can ignore our minus x. Plugging everything into our equilibrium expression, we're going to have x times x on the top all over 0.25 on the bottom, and that'll be equal to 6.3 times 10 to the negative fifth, which is our Kb value. So we can rewrite that as 6.3 times 10 to the negative fifth is equal to x squared over 0.25, our initial concentration. We'll multiply 0.25 by both sides of the equation. That gives us x squared is equal to 
1.575 times 10 to the negative fifth. We'll take the square root of both sides of our equation to get x. x is equal to our hydroxide ion concentration, according to our ice table. And that comes out to being 3.97 times 10 to the minus third molar. From here, we can calculate our pOH by taking the negative log of the hydroxide ion concentration. So we'll take negative log of that value. And that gives us a pOH of our solution of about 2.40. So we were asked for our hydroxide ion concentration, which that was our x. We got our pOH. And lastly, our pH we can calculate by taking 14, the pKW, minus the pOH. So that'll be 14 minus 2.40. And our pH comes out to about 11.60. And pH is greater than 7 because we had a weak base. So we had a basic solution. The acid ionization constant and the base ionization constant are related to one another through the Kw for water for any conjugate acid-base pair. So that means that if we were given the Ka in a problem, but we really needed the Kb, that we could solve for that unknown Kb by rearranging that first equation and using the Kw of water. We could also say that the pKa plus the pKb will be equal to the pKw, which is 14. The Kw for water is 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. So we could rearrange and find a missing Kb, or we could rearrange and find a missing Ka if we were given the opposite of what we actually needed. So for example, if we have a conjugate acid-base pair, ammonia and ammonium ion, and we consider their acid ionization constants and their base ionization constants. So for ammonia in water, ammonia would be functioning as the weak base, which would make water be functioning as a weak acid. There would be an equilibrium established. Our Ammonia would pluck a proton off of our acid and it would form some ammonium ion and the water would become hydroxide ion. So since what we have reacting with water is a weak base, we could look up the Kb for ammonia and the Kb is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. Now imagine that we have a solution of ammonium in water. So in this case, the roles are reversed. The ammonium ion would be the acid. The water would be the base. So the species we would produce at equilibrium would be when ammonium donates a proton to water, it would become NH3. And water would pick up a proton and become hydronium ion, H3O+. So since ammonium is acting as an acid with water, we would look up the Ka for the ammonium ion. And from our chart, it is 5.6 times 10 to the negative 10th. So we could write this relationship that the Ka for ammonium times the Kb for ammonia will equal the Kw for water. So if we plug in our Ka, 5.6 times 10 to the negative 10th times our Kb value, 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth. That gives us pretty much exactly 1.00 times 10 to the negative 14th, which that is our Kw. So there's always going to be that relationship for any conjugate acid-base pair where we could find a missing one. And the value that you get when you multiply Ka times Kb for any conjugate acid-base pair will always equal the Kw for water.